Hey, what's up, guys? <sighs> it is seventh period. This is the uh, last live stream of the day. This is the fourth one. Thank you. It's actually fake, but it looks nice. <laughs> Have to water it. Um, let's see. I'm gonna catch up on the comments here. Illegal videos. All right, I can't condone that. Um, <laughs> can we see your kid? Yeah, not here yet. Uh, and my, my my wife's out for a, a walk, so um, I don't know. If she gets home, we'll see if she wants to make an appearance. But. Um, <laughs> let's see uh matthew's asking how i've been doing i've been good thanks for asking not everybody asks um i've been good it's been it's been pretty busy i've uh i've actually been keeping really busy this week um part of it is like getting all this stuff set up for you guys and making screencasts and getting everything planned um but i also um I guess I can make a little plug. Like I started a little side project. So on Sunday when we started like going to shutdown mode, um, I started thinking a lot about, you know, the seniors in our neighborhood and communities, the people that are sick that like are medically vulnerable and can't get out. And so on Sunday I put out a little um, feeler to like my church group to see if anybody wanted to start up a group to um, uh, make deliveries to, of groceries and stuff to older people. Uh, that are living alone, that don't have a support system. And uh, that's kind of blown up a lot. Um, so on Sunday, I put it out there. By Monday, I had like 20 people that volunteered to drive. Um, and then um, by Tuesday, it was like 40. Uh, and then by yesterday, it, well, yesterday's Wednesday, right? Yeah, so by yesterday, it was, uh, I, I think we hit 70 drivers. Um, and so we've been, I've been really busy actually. It's like almost running my own business. I mean, it's obviously not for profit, but we've been getting donors, giving money and um, a lot of uh, drivers, some high school students, some of the seniors have signed up for this, but they, they're making um, delivery runs to uh, help people out in this, in this time of need. Um, so it's been really cool. Like we actually, we made the news on uh, Monday night, I think. And uh, in, uh, it's actually grown so much and we've had so many people like words kind of spread up to um, I don't know what you guys are talking about stonks but uh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on but uh, yeah the word spread to the city so much that we are we're actually expanding so I met up with I got some some people up there and had a little team meeting and I'm going to be planting this program up there as well so it's definitely keeping me a bit really really busy but it's uh, it's all good um, for a good cause you know uh, so um yeah so I've, I've been i've been saying really busy like today i've got these live streams i'm doing but then in between live streams i'm making phone calls to uh you know different people and trying to figure out how to transition when the baby comes because i'm not gonna be able to do this um <laughs> sorry you're out of cereal dude i think you're okay you, you i think yeah you, we can try to get you some cereal <laughs> so yeah, it's not really a business. It's just a volunteer thing. Like it's it's not a it's not a nonprofit or anything. It's just a bunch of bunch of people that want to help out. So uh, it's it's good. It keeps me busy. Um, what is this stonks stonks thing? I don't know. Should I be looking that up? Do I want to look that up? Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, get some churros. I'd love some. Um, stonks. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, if you guys haven't noticed, there is a little bit of a delay here. It's a lot better. Like this morning, I did my first live stream with the AP and it was like, we did the whole thing for like a 30 second delay. It was really annoying. So I've lowered the latency on it. We're like, a, it's like a two second delay. So it's not too bad, but, uh, oh, it's a meme. Okay. I'll have to check that out later. Uh, let's see. How's the baby Elizabeth? Thanks for asking. Baby's doing good. He's been really active. Uh, it's kind of crazy. On top of all of that, um, we are about two, uh, two weeks and two days away from the baby coming. So 
Um, it's kind of gotten us a little nervous. Like we're obviously really excited, but it's also kind of a crazy time to bring a kid into the world. So I would, I would personally be okay if it came late. Um, the later is the better. Just you know, because yeah, it's just we have no idea what's what's going to be happening here. Um, I um, <laughs> been the pre stepsister. Who are you? So yeah, you guys are supposed to be logging in with your school IDs or school emails so I can see who everybody is. And, and like last last period, we did have people that were not in the class join us and that's fine. But I do have the ability to remove and ban people. So don't give me reason to, um, you know, there, there's gonna be some parts where we're gonna do some biology stuff. So if you're, uh, distra if you're distracting me, I'm gonna kick you out. <laughs> uh, what are we gonna do about the baby and Corona? You know, I, um, I, we're going to figure it out, you know, like it, I, I, if the baby comes, we're going to have it. And then we're going to really be super vigilant about like locking down and staying inside and keeping everything clean. That's kind of the best that we can do. Um, Michelle, good to see you. Uh, do you think we'll be having finals even if the pandemic continues? You know, we don't know. Uh, I, the district is, you know, this is unprecedented, right? So we're all kind of figuring this out as we go. And that includes the people higher up. So I have not heard anything about finals yet. Last I heard, we are scheduled to come back uh, after spring break, but I think they're just gonna have to wait and see. Like this literally is a day by day thing. Uh, you guys have seen how much things have changed uh, like just in the past week. Um, and the truth is it's gonna get a lot worse before it gets better. Um, someone mentioned Italy. Uh, if you haven't been following the news, uh, Italy officially, their death rate surpassed uh, China. So uh, it's gotten pretty bad over there. Like, you know, people, the doctors are so overwhelmed that they're like, if people, if someone comes in really sick, they're just like, sorry, there's nothing we can do. And they send them away and they're basically like letting people die because it's, it's gotten to that point. Uh, and that's really, remember, that's the main reason why we're having all this social distancing and uh, the shelter in place thing is to avoid getting there. The question is, has the United States actually um, done this um, soon enough and we don't uh, we don't really know yet you know unfortunately if you look at the the rate of growth of uh, the infections we look more like Italy than we do uh, you know Taiwan or South Korea so it's kind of a, ma a matter of uh, of um, of time and, and waiting it out so to answer your questions a lot of you guys are asking about like finals and what's gonna happen the rest of the school year we're gonna have to just go week by week or even day by day and, and we'll have to see um, I I, I don't know yet, <laughs> so we don't have an answer. So, you know, wait for wait for confirmation from Ms. Dzinski or the district office. They'll be able to uh, they'll be able to answer that question for you. Okay. Um, just to get let you guys know kind of the format of all of this, um, we uh, are going to break this down into three parts. Uh, don't be embarrassed. It's an awesome name. I love your full name. Um, it's really cool. Um, yeah, there are rumors, Jalo. Uh, and they, I wouldn't say that they're they're confirmed, right? Like nothing's confirmed until it's official, but that's certainly a possibility. Like there is a possibility that school is gonna be closed to the end of the year. And if that's the case, um, you know, I don't, I don't think we're gonna want you to like repeat your whole grade or whatever. We're gonna do what we can, you know, that's why I, I've been saying this whole time, like my job, I just wanna make sure that you guys have access to everything that you're supposed to access. Um, to me, the, your grades and tests and all that are, are less important. It's more about you guys learning. So, you know, if you're willing to get on board with that and, and step up to that challenge, you know, I'm going to keep on teaching. You guys are going to keep on learning. And if they say, you know, we don't have finals, then we don't have finals, you know, but, uh, you know, you're, it's, uh, yeah, it's just going to, we're going to have to be flexible with that. Okay. Um, hey, here's the, here's the rundown for the, the time that we're going to have together. I'm not going to be running this for, um, the, the whole afternoon. I do have phone calls to make um, with the project and everything. Uh, but uh, the first part, we'll just kind of open up for rent, like AMA, ask me anything. We can talk about coronavirus. We can talk about how you guys are doing. Um, actually, here's a question for you guys uh, while I kind of finish explaining the, the stuff. Um, two things, like respond in like one, one uh, comment so that we're not getting like multiple comments. But number one, what are you guys doing to stay busy? and occupied and, and stimulated. And number two, are you sticking to a schedule or not? I'm really curious if you're following that advice. Um, and so go ahead and uh, start writing up your comments 
Uh, what are you doing to stay busy? And are you keeping up with the schedule? Uh, as you guys do that, um, so let me finish kind of breaking this down. So we're gonna have to do a kind of question answer thing. I'm gonna go into speciation, just answer any questions you guys might have about the last two assignments. That's the screencast, as well as the uh, one species or two activity from yesterday. Uh, and then the last bit, I wanna set aside the last 10 minutes to um, go over tomorrow's assignment so you guys know what to do for that, okay? So i um, still gonna wait, I'm waiting on you guys to get, uh, to respond. What are you doing and are you sticking to a schedule? Um, while you're doing that, I'll answer some questions. Um, yeah, the governor did mention that some of the schools may be closed. I, again, that's all like what they're considering. It's just not official till, till it's official, right? Um, hello, you want to go back to school? Yeah, I, I, I'm surprised. I think a lot of people actually are surprised at how how much we get out of the school day. You know, like when you're in it, you don't you hate it, but once you're out of it, you're like, oh, this actually is pretty good for me. So yeah, I, I miss seeing you guys too for sure. Uh, what's up with the assignment numbers? Yeah, good question. Um, let's see. So I'll actually show you guys. Let me switch over to my other screen here. I did bring a mon other monitor from school. So if you go to Canvas and you click on Home, it'll take you to this page. And what I've got here is a whole calendar. It's a schedule for you guys day by day of what we're doing. So if you're confused on the assignment numbers or the points, everything is on here. Uh, what's not on here is the frog evolution activity, that packet. That was assignment eight. That's worth 15 points. You're just going to glue or staple that into your notebook. Okay. Um, uh, I did get the numbers off, so I, I did fix this. Uh, the lecture, uh, the, the one I did the other day was, it did say assignment eight, but it's actually assignment nine. And then I've updated all the ones that come after that to reflect that. So the assignment numbers are correct now. Just check on the Canvas site if you're not sure. Uh, if things have gotten out of order, like you already took your notes and you already did one species or two, and then you, um, you know, you're like, oh, I need, I didn't know how to put the frog packet in there. Just go ahead and put that in as assignment 10. The order doesn't really matter as long as you're like keeping up with everything. That's, uh, that's all I'm asking. Okay. So it doesn't have to be exact. Um, yeah. So those of you guys that are asking assignment eight is the, uh, frog evolution packet. Okay, so to kind of back up, assignment seven was the genetics of evolution lecture notes. That was 10 points. Assignment eight is the frog evolution packet. That's the one with the graphs and the red and, uh, the red and brown frogs. That's 15 points. And then assignment nine picks up right here with the uh, speciation lecture. Okay, uh, a lot of things going on. So you guys have been telling me what you're doing. Uh, a lot of you guys are keeping up with the schedule, kind of, that's good. Uh, constant, you know, keeping up with work, watching anime, playing video games, keeping track of time, playing with dogs, all really good things. Uh, Tim, you're doing all your work in the morning so you can have the rest of the day yourself. That's awesome, man. That's, that's the way to do it. You know, good to have, to have that discipline. Uh, Jessica, wasting time for the past few days. That's okay. You can still catch up here, but, um, you know, I, I would recommend that you keep up a schedule. Uh, Michelle, you've been babysitting. That's great. I hope. I don't know if you're getting paid or not. It's probably better if you're getting paid. Um, you do stick to the schedules. Bra stars. I don't. A lot of there's a lot of stuff I don't know here. I'm just assuming they're games or uh, or whatever. Uh, Jalo, you said that Tiziani's got daily workouts. That's awesome. You know, I don't know if you guys are digging that or not, but actually, it's it's a you don't may or not realize it right now, but that's a really good thing that you guys are doing workouts. I actually had. My, my juniors and seniors in AP, they're not in PE anymore. And they were actually asking like, what can I do in my house <laughs> to stay active? Uh, and so I was telling them like, if you go on YouTube, um, there's tons of videos like personal trainers or yoga instructors or meditations. There are a lot of re great resources where like you can just, you know, do a workout or a meditation for anywhere from five minutes to 30 minutes. And uh, they are, they're, some of them are legit. Like we've been doing some and like after 10 minutes, I'm like kind of dying. So. Um, it's, it's definitely good to stay active indoors. Um, let's see, trying to finish all the work. Did a whole week's worth of math in 30 minutes. Okay. Eyebrows. Dang, Elizabeth, the eyebrows are probably looking really good, but, uh, don't do it too much. You might pluck out too much and then have to start drawing them in. Um, okay. Any other questions? Uh, let's see. Brill, you've had a schedule, a lot of family time. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, you guys might, um, you know, if you haven't already, like FaceTiming is a really good thing. Uh, I'm getting a little hungry here, so I'm gonna eat while I wait for things to come in. But, uh, you know, we've been doing some FaceTiming with family and just to like get uh, get some social contact with people, 
because I don't know about you guys. I'm pretty extroverted. Uh, some of you guys are introverts. You're like, this is my dream. I can just stay at home all day and not talk to anybody. But those of us, uh, those of us that are more extroverted, you know, it's been, it's good to, you know, check in with people and, and get some face to face. I'm just eating some pancakes. I'm gonna finish my breakfast. I've been working all morning. Any other questions or, uh, yeah, what do you get? What questions do you guys have for me? I can't believe it's already three o'clock. It's crazy. It's been a busy morning. Okay, so you guys are just watching me eat now. That's weird. What do they call those YouTube channels where uh, someone just like eats a crap load of food? And you, you guys send money? Can we do that? Because <laughs> uh, I could definitely do that. <laughs> How stressed am I? <laughs> Mukbang? <laughs> okay. Hmm. All right, let me finish this. Not answer your questions. All right, my nose is itchy. Vincent ASMR. Yeah, I don't have the right uh, microphones for that. You know, I could do the little, I don't know what they do. Start, start whispering like this. <laughs> it's so creepy. Okay, um, yeah, but whatever you're into, right? It's all good, no judging. Okay, uh, answering some questions. How stressed am I? Uh, I'm not super stressed, you know, I think I'm trying to find, I've, try to maintain some kind of balance of like being careful but also not be, feeling like the world's gonna end because it's not like we're gonna be here um so i i would say uh, i don't know about one uh, not at all to 300 bpms but on a scale of one to ten ten being really stressed out i don't know six i don't know six i don't know it, it's um i'm just kind of balancing there's like really three main things right now. It's like one is like the school stuff, two is this um, the grocery delivery project, uh, and then three is just making sure that my wife and I are staying healthy and having good time to connect together and uh, going for walks and just you know enjoying. Even though it's crazy, we are trying to enjoy the last couple of weeks of life without a kid because once they come, my life's gonna be really different for the next 20 years. So. Um, trying to savor that and be intentional about spending some time together. So I'm doing okay. Uh, what's my favorite quarantine fit? I don't know what fit, what you mean by that. What's the, what's the fit? I don't know what that means. <laughs> Someone tell me what fit means. Thanks for the sweater feedback. Uh, let's take a trip to quarantine. Will I have baby listened to ASMR? No, I probably won't. Uh, <laughs> these are not 59 unread emails, okay? So these emails, I've set it up so that when the emails come in, they go to my, uh, to this email account over here, and that's where I check all of it. So um, I, I do like see and respond to the emails. Uh, I just don't really go, I don't like the, I'd rather use the, the Google thing rather than the, Oh, outfit. Okay. <laughs> Baby makes slime. What? This is so weird. Um, <laughs> so yeah, thanks. Oh, thanks for the thanks for my quarantine outfit. Yeah, I know. I I mean, I don't know. You. It's. Uh, anyways, how's the baby gonna make slime? I don't know what's going on with that slime thing. Okay. Uh, any other questions before we uh, move on to some bio stuff? 
Hope you guys are enjoying this. Hope this is fun. I do miss you guys a lot. Oh, how does uh, someone ask about how do they determine the length of the closure? Um, you know, I think it's a balance of a couple things. I think uh, it's going to be um, one is going to be the the advice of like the San Mateo County of Health. Um, there's all these different layers, right? Let me switch. You guys are like checking out all my screens and stuff. I'm going to go back to just the webcam here. Uh, so um, there's uh, there's all these levels of like organization, right? From federal to state to, to, to the county to the district and then uh, individuals. So uh, I think they're just getting, they're waiting on information from like all those different tiers of like how long we need to be in this sh like shelter in place state. I think that's the big thing was like, as long as we're sheltered in place, we're gonna we're not ready to like have people go back out. And so I think there's like that's like the first phase. And then after that, then they have to give some people time to quarantine to say like, okay, we're not sheltered in place now, you can start going out. But schools are still considered like really large gatherings, right? So we don't want like the number of infections to go down and then have all you guys go back to school and then be re-exposed and then have the infections go back up. So there's a lot of different parts of the equation in determining the length of the, uh, the closure. Um, let's see, uh, Elizabeth, we're having a boy. Um, let's see, is baby gonna be YouTubed? <laughs> uh, you know, I might, at some point, I think that'd be really fun. I mean, you guys are already subscribed here and you know, if we, even when we do go back, we're gonna have a sub. So maybe that'll be my way to kind of check in and you guys get to meet him and I'll give you a little feed, a uh, little update on how things are going with baby. Uh, we finally aren't across the room. <laughs> yes. Yes. You guys can finally sit next to each other. Yeah. I, I know how much you guys want that and it's not, uh, and I'm not doing that to be mean, but you know, it helps the class keep running. So that's, that's my priority. Yeah. Baby vlogs. Yeah. It might be, it might actually be like the cutest thing ever. Honestly, it's going to be really adorable. <laughs> Wangjin check. Wangjin check. I'm gonna, you mean there's your seats. <laughs> if you go back, um, I don't know. I think if we do go back, I probably will advise her to keep the seats as they are for now until she gets to know you. And then she and then she can decide based on how you behave if you're ready to sit next to each other or not. So I would say that when you get back, don't test the waters, do the right thing and um, just try to be as good of a student as possible. Give her every reason to, uh, you know, let you sit next to each other. Man, I'm hungry, man. Okay, it's okay. I can wait like 10 more minutes, 15 minutes. Um, thanks for the feedback on music. Hey, let's go ahead and jump into the next thing, which is to look at the, um, uh, what do you call it? The lecture stuff. So um, if you got, if you guys should have taken notes on Tuesday, right? When I made that screencast, so you guys all took notes. Uh, in your notebook. So if you ha if you don't have it right now with you, I'm going to give you like 30 seconds. Go run and grab your bio notebook, open up to your notes. And um, what I'm going to do is switch over to the PowerPoint and answer any questions you guys have. Um, and so we'll go over, oops, sorry, we'll go over uh, both assignment nine and assignment 10 together. So start getting your questions together. Start thinking right now and be ready to ask questions. Okay, I'm going to switch over to the PowerPoint a little bit and while you guys are getting all that and while you're asking questions I'm gonna find some food oh yeah got some, got some tortilla chips man is going to turn into that, uh, what do you guys call it, mukbang? <laughs> Just eating here, you guys are watching me eat. I'm 
turn up the turn the music up and my my voice down so you don't hear me chewing and crunching and all that. question thanks man um angelo is asking were we supposed to do the analysis um yeah sorry i wasn't super clear about that so for that one that's actually not this lecture right that's um the one species or two yeah so this one um at minimum all i wanted you to do was to go through each example and just kind of tell me uh whether you thought there were one species or two and then back that up with evidence from the, the previous lecture so um, you just had to write a couple sentences for, for maybe two sentences or three sentences for each example. Um, the questions at the end, the analysis questions, they're not bad questions. They're good questions, but um, they're not, uh, I'm not requiring it. You can do it for fun if you want, or just look over it and just think about it, but I'm not going to require the, those questions. Um, Elizabeth, so the species paper I posted, uh, if you go back to our um, Canvas site, you'll see that that is actually um, right here. So that's that's assignment 10, one species or two. I don't know if you can see that. Let me zoom in a little bit. So that's assignment 10. The speciation was was nine. Um, that's the that's the, the lecture notes that you took in your notebook. And then this is a separate assignment, assignment number um, Kyle's asking, what is reduced hybrid viability? Good question. So, um, let me see. So first I'll kind of start with this here. So you guys remember we talked about like prezygotic and postzygotic barriers and that all happens, um, after the, uh, Selena's asking, what's the analysis part of that we're, so we're not doing that, but the analysis questions are at the very, very end of the packet, the one species or two. Um, sorry, Kyle. So um, yeah, so the, the post-zygotic and post, pre-zygotic and post-zygotic barriers, um, they're separated by the moment of fertilization, right? So um, your question of like, what is, where does, what's the um, reduced hybrid viability? That falls in the post-zygotic barrier timeframe. So once the zygote is formed, and um, and it's, it grows into like a baby, basically. Uh, there's still a couple of challenges, a couple of things we have to check off before we can decide whether or not they're the same species. So one of them, as you asked, is what uh, uh, reduce hybrid viability. All that means is uh, are the are they viable, right? Remember the vi the word viable means that they're able to survive. So if they have reduced hybrid uh, reduced viability, and we use the word hybrid because we're we're taking two two individuals that we think might be different. And we're combining them together to make one. Uh, so if that hybrid, that baby that's born, has a reduced ability to be viable, in other words, reduced ability to survive and they die, then those two parents are considered two separate species. Okay. In the same way, if their ability to be fertile is reduced, so reduced hybrid fertility, uh, their, their kids can't have babies, then they're also going to uh, be considered separate species. Right. And then the last one, just because we're there, is hybrid breakdown. So even if the first generation is viable and it's fertile, but over time it starts to, to break down. Um, in other words, the like second or third or fourth generation, they lose the ability to survive or reproduce, then they're considered to be separate species. Um, and so that's, you know, we, uh, the example with the mules and all that, that would be an example of reduced hybrid fertility. They definitely can survive really well, but the mule is not going to be able to, to survive, uh, and therefore horses and donkeys are two separate species. Okay. Um, so, Angelo, you did one through three of the analysis. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Um, feel free to do as much or as little as you want. You know, if, if you need something to do, just go for it. It's, 
all good stuff to think about. Appreciate you doing that. Uh, any other questions on, um, we can kind of bounce right back and forth between this lecture uh, or the, uh, the activity that you guys worked on yesterday. So um, whatever you need help with right now, it's your time to ask for help. Um, so, Elizabeth, you're asking if they're the same species. Um, the answer is, um, when you, if you say cats, you mean like house cats? The answer is no, they're not the same species, right? Um, they're very closely related to each other. And, and as you're going to see in the activity that we do today, they have a lot in common. But to be the same species in nature, they have to be able to reproduce and make fertile offspring. Right. So um, cats and lions are actually kind of like a bit of a stretch. Um, I don't think even in like a lab, they would um, they would be able to mate a, a, a what did you say, a tiger and a, or a lion and a, a cat. Um, but uh, we do have hybrids of lions and tigers right at zoos. They're, they're called ligers, I think. Um, and so if ligers are a thing, does that mean lions and tigers are the same species? Well, the answer is no, right? Because even though they're, they have babies in nature, that wouldn't actually happen. And um, and so, you know, and the reason for that, the easiest one is because of geographic isolation, right? Uh, tigers live in Asia uh, and lions live in Africa. So there are two separate continents. They would never mix together in Asia. So, or not in Asia, they would never mix together and make uh, offspring. So um, they would be considered separate species. Um, and that's really what this, like going back to this assignment and no one's asked any questions yet. I don't know if it's because you haven't done it yet or you just don't have any questions. But as you guys might have noticed as you went through this that some of them are a little bit blurry. There's not always a very clear answer um, of like whether or not they're one species or two. And that's kind of purposeful, right? The thing you want to remember is like, like humans are, nature is not doing things to, to fit into um, human ways of defining or categorizing things. Uh, it's the other way around. What we're doing is we're making observations of what nature does, and we're trying to do our best to compartmentalize and categorize and define things in a way that we can understand. So uh, the reality is in some cases with these with these examples, it's really obvious that they're, they're one species or two, but in some other ones, you could kind of argue either way, okay? Um, Kayla's asking, uh, are there other types of barriers that cause species to separate? Um, and, uh, when you say other, I'm not exactly sure, like in addition to what, but if you want to kind of see the full list, uh, this slide here in the slideshow kind of shows you all the barriers. Okay. Um, there is one barrier we didn't talk about, which is comedic isolation. Um, and I'll go ahead and talk about that really quick. So we left off like before the fertilization, we did get to mechanical isolation, but really fast comedic isolation, um, is when the sperm and eggs are not compatible with each other. Okay, so mechanical, like you, you let's say like the two individuals, they're in the same place, they're mating at the same time, they have similar behaviors, their parts fit together so they can actually try to mate, and then the sperm gets the egg, but then they don't fuse. Okay, that's comedic isolation. And why would that happen? Because maybe the sperm has different proteins on the outside than the egg does, and they don't recognize each other. If they don't recognize each other, the egg won't let the sperm get inside. Um, even if it does get inside, the chromosomes could be really, really different, right? We have 23 chromosomes in our sperm, but chimpanzees and, uh, and uh, gorillas might have, I can't remember if they have one more or one less than us, but if the chromosome number uh, uh, is off, then they're not going to be able to fertilize and, and make that offspring. So um, that's going to, uh, Kayla, to answer your question, that's going to be another barrier in addition to the ones that we've talked about that prevent them from being uh, two species, okay? Uh, Elizabeth, I kind of already talked about lions and tigers, so I hope you caught that part. Uh, Angelo, you're asking, not sure if the, grease, the green lace wings are one species or two. So let's take a look at that one and find that. That's example number four. So they look identical, live in the same place, but they do not mate in the wild because they have different mating calls. Right off the bat there, again, from a, if you think about like, what's going with Aunt Lizzie? You guys are getting a little distracted there. Um, so right off the bat, in, in, in nature, if they're not mating, 
that's already like a pretty good indicator that they're not the same species, right? Um, in the lab, it does um, it does say that you know if they get them to mate in a lab, the lay, the, the lay students are fertile, but they say the genetic analysis suggests that changes in a small number of genes result in different mating calls. So again, the mating call part that's like a that's a type of behavioral isolation. So Angelo, to answer your question, um, there I would probably say that they're two different species because um, they are using different calls and that's gonna cause the two groups to eventually become more and more different, okay? Um, okay, people are still mixed up on the assignments. Thanks for clarifying that uh, for Kyle. Okay, can you cover it a week after that too? I don't really know if you're talking about something different. Let's try to stay on topic here, guys, because I, um, not that I don't want you to talk, but I, um, you know, we only we don't have unlimited time here, so. And it looks like we're missing some people. Let me see what. Let's see who is here. Yeah, there's a lot of you guys that are watching, but you're not necessarily commenting. So, feel free to jump in. I have, you know, there's quite a few of you haven't heard from yet. Okay, Michelle's got a question. Can animals reproduce even if they have a different number of chromosomes, or does it depend, or does it never work? Um, that's a good question. I would say that if they have different numbers of chromosomes, it makes it really hard for it to work out, right? Um, I mean, think about humans, even just in the in, within humans that are the same species. Um, if you have the case of Down syndrome, right, where someone has a, an extra chromosome 21, just by having that extra set of genetic information causes someone to have uh, Down syndrome, like that genetic disease. So um, if you're like talking about like chimpanzees and, and gorillas and you're trying to mate them together, um, they probably are genetically pretty different. Even if they have the same number of chromosomes, it doesn't mean that the, the ATGCs um, of, the, of the chimp and the ATGCs of the gorilla are gonna be similar enough that it's actually gonna work out. Um, even if they have the same number of chromosomes, genetically they have to be similar enough for the for the offspring to be able to make it. Okay, hope that answers your questions. Um, Morel's asking, can a monkey and a human have a baby? Um, probably not. Um, there are some there are some differences, uh, a lot of differences there. So it's probably it's pretty unlikely that we can do that even in the lab. Um, let's see, if the uh, offspring is created in the lab, does it? it doesn't count yeah i mean you know it i think angela it depends on like who you're talking to um and how you want to define it right i mean like i'm i go off of the like at the very simplest you you're defining it as like can they can they make viable and fertile offspring that's like the most general kind of the loosest term so some people would say like as long as you can make viable and and, vi and fertile offspring they are the same species um then other people, like, I, I'm kind of more on the side of, like, well, even if they can do it, if they can't do it in nature, right, are they the same species? Um, and the example I would give, like, to kind of support my my view is, like, think about the squirrels on the Grand Canyon, right? Um, there, you have squirrels on the east side and the west side separated by this river. If you brought them together again, they probably would be able to mate, right? And you would call them the same species. Um, but... Uh, they're still separated by that river, right? And that means that they're not actually able to mix. So even if you like brought those squirrels into a lab and had them reproduce, when you put them back in nature, the river is still separating them. That's gonna cause them to have, you know, to be different species. So, um, so yeah, that, I think I think I would kind of ask myself like, what happens actually in the wild? Um, Morels, could it look like? Could it happen? I don't know that we we know that for sure, right? I mean, you guys listen to a podcast, I think, about that, um, and no one's ever done it. There could be a chance that like it might be viable uh, for a little bit, but um, you know, we're about like ninety nine point nine percent the same, which sounds like a lot, but that's actually quite a few differences. So, I think it, yeah, I think it. Uh, we wouldn't really know until we did it, but that's kind of like an unethical experiment to do, right? So we may never actually know. Okay, any other questions? All really good questions, guys. Thank you for that. Um, any questions on this activity? I'm gonna 
we are like actually almost running out of time so i need and i need to run soon so um i just need to go over one more thing which is to go over tomorrow's assignment with you so last call for any questions on this before we move into that last bit Um, yeah, glad that helped, Angelo. Um, let's talk about uh, tomorrow's stuff because I'm not going to be doing a live cast tomorrow. So going back to our Canvas page, you can see that tomorrow is Friday. Um, I also like this is also the reason it's good to have a schedule because then you, at least you have like a little benchmark to be like, ah, oh, it's the end of the week, right? Um, if you're getting to a point where you're like, I don't know what day of the week it is, you can start like feeling kind of lost. So um, tomorrow's Friday, you're gonna be working on assignment 11, which is the carnivore treats. Now at the very end of uh, my lecture, um, we talked about phylogenetic treats, right? And how um, they show how closely things are related. They show uh, when they had a common ancestor and also how far back that ancestor goes. So um, I'm gonna have you guys actually make one. And that is uh, that you can download this from the Canvas site, okay? Now, if you loaded it earlier, we did have a little problem with um, Uh, we did have a little problem with the link here, so I had to relink it. So if you're clicking on this and you get like a 404, uh, it says like unauthorized or whatever, uh, just go to the top of the of the, um, the browser, refresh your page like I just did here, and, uh, and it should download just fine. Okay. Um, so you're gonna download that. You don't have to print it out. If you don't have a printer, that's totally fine. Um, or you can print it out. And that's gonna bring you to this, um, this assignment. Just read through the intro part right here. Basically what we're gonna do is build a tree that's uh, bigger and more complicated than this. What I have here uh, is a table that shows uh, a bunch of different species. And the way this is organized is every species is named uh, by the combination of its genus and species. Okay, so humans are homo sapien. That means we're members of genus homo. I'll zoom in here. We're genus homo, and then we're spe our species is uh, sapien. Right, and um, and so there are levels above that of organization, though, like family, superfamily, suborder, order, class, and so on. Um, some of you guys may remember that an acronym was Dumb Computer came over for good soup, and that stands for domain. <laughs> I'm gonna get this wrong. Domain, kingdom, phylum, uh, class, order, family, genus, species. I think that's what it was. Um, yeah, I missed order. Let me try that again. Domain, kingdom. Uh, phylum, order, family, genus, species. Yeah, that's the one. So there's seven levels. Um, and the idea with this is basically that um, as you start over here, this like the class here is a more general category than a suborder or a family or a genus, right? So all these animals here that are listed are members of class mammalia, okay? Uh, that means they're all mammals. They're also all members of order carnivora. They're all carnivores. But when you get to the suborder level, and here's like a little question, see if we can answer first here. When you look, zoom in, you see these two words, filiformia and caniformia. Okay, look at those two words. What uh, what words that you, have you heard of that like look or sound kind of like filiformia and caniformia? And they both relate to carnivores, but they're uh, they're a branch point. Someone type it in. There we go. Good. Yeah, some of you guys are getting it. <laughs> guys, let's not get let's not get into that weird conversation about sex with animals. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, filiformia is where we get the word feline from, and caniformia, Annabelle, you got it, is canine, right? So in this chart here, what it's showing is that like there are all these carnivores, but one of the branches we see in the suborder level is we have the felines, and then we have the canines. Okay. And, um, and then as you work your way down through super family, family, genus, and species, it breaks off and it gets more and more and more specific uh, until you get to the species level. And all of these are gonna be unique to a particular species. 
So the first thing you're gonna do is actually find out what these actually mean. So uh, if you print out the worksheet, you can fill it in here or you can just write it directly in your notebook. But what I like you to do is just do a quick Google search on that scientific name. Okay, here we have Panthera tigris. That's a pretty easy one to figure out. That's a, so I'll let you guess what that is. Um, and you're just gonna write out its common name on that line. So do that for all 12 animals. So uh, the, none of these are really that weird. You should, these are all animals you're familiar with. This is just their actual uh, scientific name. Okay? Now, once you have that, what you're gonna do is start to build your phylogenetic tree. Uh, and that's gonna look like a bigger and more complicated version of this. But I, I did put this up there to kind of help you see like how you might wanna lay it out. Now, phylogenetic trees actually come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. If I switch over here to Google Images and just scroll through, you'll see that there's trees that go from left to right, from bottom to top, some are more circular, some are more square, some are kind of like more triangle and pointed. Um, this one's kind of a wacky one that's like circular and, and branched. Um, there's all different ways of doing it, but they all are based on the same thing, which is whenever you see two lines come together, like you see here, um, that means that there's a common ancestry. That's where they diverged and broke off. So um, that's what you wanna keep in mind when you're making your tree tomorrow, is you wanna start at the bottom with the thing that's the most general. And what's the most general in this chart? It's gonna be class and order mammalia and carnivora. So you're gonna put that at the very, very bottom, okay? And just a little tip for you, before you go and do anything, maybe a way to kind of space out your page, um, I actually recommend that you like, use two full pages in your notebook for this. But on the side, maybe on the left side, go ahead and write all these levels out. So do like one row or one, yeah, one row for class, one for order, one for suborder, family, super family, family, genus, and species. So have the class at the bottom and have the species at the top, okay? Like they have right here on the side. Uh, and then once you have that, you can start to plug in, um, you know, all the branch points and, you know, who's related to who and when they break off. Now you'll notice that some of these with the super family, they don't have a super family. So when you get to that level, just skip it and go straight to the next uh, level above that, which is gonna be family, okay? And so again, you're gonna do that in the next uh, two pages of your notebook. You can do, you can try to cram it all into one page, but we've got a ton of pages in our notebook. Just, I say, go ahead and use um, two full pages. Uh, also leave some room at the top with the species because I have for you some pictures. Um, now this document has like four copies of this because if we were in school, I would print this out, cut it, and everybody would get one set of pictures, okay? But you can, um, if you want, print this out and cut them into squares, and then you can just glue them at the top next to each species so that you know which one is which. Uh, I know we've got some artists in seventh period, so if you don't want to print it out or you don't have a printer, feel free to just hand draw the animals up there uh, <clears throat> however you'd like. Okay. Um, Elizabeth, good question. How do we submit it? You're just going to do everything in your notebook from for now. Okay, everything I assign, um, you either take the notes directly in the notebook or you fill out the worksheets and then glue it in your notebook like we normally do. Uh, and then when we, whenever we get back, we'll we'll check it off. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to have you guys like email me the assignments because it's it's kind of just a pain and there's you know there's a there's, that's a lot for me to check. So. Um, does anybody have any questions about this assignment? <clears throat> okay, cool. Try to be thorough with that. So that is already online. Um, sorry, I just put a tortilla in my mouth. Um, yeah, so that's already online. And so if you guys want to like get started on it now, you could actually probably get it done today and then you're wide open tomorrow. Um, I'm just going to close by um, letting you know, like tomorrow you're going to do this assignment or today over the weekend. Um, there's no homework, but on Monday, uh, if you look at the schedule, we are going to have a um, online quiz on Canvas. Okay. Now everybody's been asking like, how do you do online quizzes and, and is it worth points? Am I going to get graded? Where is it? Right here, Monday the 23rd, okay? Um, and uh, no, you don't have to print it, Kyle. So again, if, if you don't have a printer, just draw it as, as well as you can, okay? And if you can't draw well, it'll, it'll be hilarious. And that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks, guys. Um, so yeah, so the Canvas quiz will be online. I don't know, I haven't made it yet, so it's gonna be like maybe multiple choice, maybe some fill in the blanks. Um, I'm not gonna make it worth a ton of points uh, because if I make it too much, then people are gonna like feel like they need to cheat. 
Um, the whole reason for this is just for a way, for, number one, for you to get feedback about what you know. Um, and so I'm not really gonna grade it based on like how you score on it, unless you get like a zero where you like obviously just guess on everything to get it done. Uh, if, you, if it looks like you put some effort into it, uh, I'm gonna go give you the points for completion, okay? Um, this is just a way for me to get feedback about what you know, and this is a way for you to get feedback about what you know. We talked about this before you leave. I, I kind of want to <clears throat> challenge you guys to like go beyond just doing things for points or for a grade. Because um, the reality is like we, I mean, if we don't come back and we don't have finals, there's no, I'm, I'm not going to like give you guys tests on this. So hopefully you're just learning for the sake of learning and you're kind of enjoying that, that journey. Okay. Um, so that's what's coming on Monday. Uh, this link right here will be live. Uh, unless I can't do it that way, I'll, there'll be some instructions there. But you'll just click on that. And here's kind of my challenge to you, all right? If you feel like uh, you, you're like, oh, I don't want to do bad on this, and, and you, um, you're you not really sure about everything yet, feel free to use your notebook, okay? You, it, it's actually better if you like don't know an answer to go and like find it in your notebook or Google it and then get the answer right, because then you'll know it. Um, if you just like, I don't know it, and you just guess and you skip it, then you're still not going to know it. So it, I still would prefer that if you don't know an answer that you look it up. Um, those of you guys that feel like you got a pretty good grasp of this, uh, maybe like spend 10, 15 minutes like reviewing stuff in your notebook, and then challenge yourself to take the quiz without your notebook. Um, and again, don't worry about getting something wrong. Um, you know, you can always study up on it later, but um, I don't know. It's just, it's, uh, it's just a way to get some feedback. Okay, so we'll do that on Monday and that's gonna wrap up our evolution unit. And then we're gonna move into the next section, which is uh, all about ecology and environmental, environmental science. And there's a lot of really uh, cool stuff that we'll be talking about there. Any questions on the quiz or on the assignment or stuff for this weekend? I'm gonna, I gotta make a phone call soon. So I'm gonna close this up soon. Also, uh, if you have any comments or feedback about like how the class is going or like the videos or the screencasts, you can either email me directly if you need something uh, or you can just put a, you know, a comment. Uh, this is gonna, when we end the stream, it'll get posted to my, my channel and you, uh, under lives and you can just uh, add a comment and give me some feedback on how it's going, okay? All right, if nobody has any questions, uh, we're done for the day. So thank you guys for spending uh, this time with me. Um, I hope you are staying safe out there and you know take care of yourself. Um, I don't know if I mentioned already, but all the counseling services, so wellness counselors and your um, your regular counselors, they're all still working. So if, uh, you're, if this has been kind of hard for you and you're getting a lot of anxiety about coronavirus or you know you're being you feel really like isolated because we're all just stuck at home um, feel free to reach out to counseling uh, and they can make an appointment and actually talk with you over the phone they'll do some teletherapy there um, so they're still there for you guys if you need anything and uh, and of course I'm here if you need anything as well okay um, if you guys have no other comments it's pretty quiet out there so I'm gonna I'm gonna close up shop here and say goodbye and um, if, uh, if we got some extra time, like the next live stream isn't scheduled till next Thursday, but if I got some time like on Tuesday or I'm just bored, I may just hop on here just to say what's up and, and it doesn't have to be anything like bio related. It can just be, you know, us hanging out and, and talking. Um, and if you guys want to reach out to people, like by all means, like set up Google Hangouts. Zoom is really popular right now. They've actually made it free uh, up to like a hundred people. So you guys can like get your own little group chats going and and uh, connect with each other, okay? So I hope that was helpful. Thanks for the feedback, Angelo and, and Fossi. Thank you guys for that. Um, but uh, take care, and I will see you guys very soon. Take care.